This week on the Digital Marketing Scoop, it's all about personal brand. Uh, we've gone and done a mashup of all our episodes around personal branding over the last couple of years. So if you're looking at building your own personal brand, I think you're going to get a lot of value from this episode. Hope you enjoy it. I think I first met you maybe back in 2012, I think, yeah. when basically when yeah. the lease kicked off. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, in that time, you have, whatever it is now, eight, eight years, you've developed what I would say is a massively strong personal brand. Yeah. Um, whether it's your own your own brand, whether it's Elite, whether it's Bebel, but I think you've been able to leverage your your own personal brand to build those to build those businesses yeah absolutely and it's um i really having had a spa prior to elite pilates up in dublin one thing i wanted to do when i came to uh, cork was get let people get to know me but primarily not be the face of the business because it was really important that it was about the people that worked there so that's really hard to gauge so then it all became much more about personal brand than it did about the brand of the business. Yeah, and it's it, I suppose what's what's exciting about personal brand, and we we're only actually having a quick chat about it beforehand, is that you can use that then to launch new products, to launch new brands that might be under different names or have to have their own kind of their own personality even. Yeah. But because you have built up that that kind of brand equity already with your your own name it's giving you the power to launch those those other those other names and those other brands oh absolutely um and when when you, you know now you have to be very open with your personal brand so you know you'll only then develop businesses that you're really passionate about and really love yeah. and hit the gut because you can't do it any other way no it's gonna if you're out there promoting a business and you don't love it it's going to come across like yeah absolutely yeah. so hard to fake it's yeah. so hard to fake you it can't. Yeah. i mean i could ask any say of my followers say on instagram what are the f- my, what are my three favorite brands that i don't own and they tell me because <laughs> when i love something oh i love it you know i yeah. i'm 100 percent in um and when i don't love something anymore i'm 100 percent out in terms of of starting up and putting yourself out there mm-hmm. did you did you have reservations against that or did it just kind of come naturally to you? And I think that is a big barrier for a lot of people mm-hmm. is they might have these great ideas. Yeah. They might have a business already, but they're just mm-hmm. kind of afraid to put themselves out there. Yeah. Do you no, have any I advice for them that? A, yeah, definitely advice. I never had the fear, thank God. Um, <laughs> I think, I suppose, as you get bigger, it might come with that. Like, you know, when there's more eyes watching, it might give you a little bit of a fear. And yeah. obviously, um, as you get bigger as well, maybe I actually don't know, but I presume maybe brands have guidelines be like, you can't say this, you can't do that. <laughs> but uh, for me, I just like, do whatever I want say whatever I want and I think the people who want to see that will stay and if they don't like me for being let's say me then I don't want them to follow me anyway and the same with brands like I don't want to work with brands that would like me for what I do naturally like if they were saying oh we're not going to work with you unless you stop doing that or stop saying that then it's it's just not a right match you know and I think as a blogger or an influencer your main let's say job is to create content that will benefit everyone you know that there's no point in doing things if your audience isn't going to like it like they're your main like stakeholder i suppose you could say and how have you found working with brands so far are they giving you kind of leeway to do what Completely. you want to do yeah they're not yeah 100 okay, percent, which is yeah. great because that's what i that's the whole fun of it is being creative and getting to use your imagination like should there be no fun or creativity or anything needed if a brand just said say this do this you know yeah. so it's coming up with the ideas is the fun part and actually putting it into action so i'm really lucky that way yeah, yeah. The, and the other thing as well as that we've said it before as well with it it probably won't work for the brand if they don't give you that mm. creative freedom yeah, because definitely. your audience well, sometimes knows. of course now there'd be like um, a brief or something well, like of the yeah. idea that they're trying to focus on but yeah. more likely than not they're always going to say we trust your creative opinion work away and then of course you have to send them over for approval yeah. and stuff and whatever else but no I've been really lucky especially yeah. Smooch is one of my favourite brands to work with I've been working with them yeah. since last summer and like we do really really fun things like they give me so much like 
room for freedom like i even started doing youtube with them which is great because Brilliant. i said straight up to them i was like i really want to focus on youtube and like they even though i don't have a lot of followers over there they were like yeah work away like we yeah. we trust you and stuff and i have a really great relationship with them so that's really good as well and i like how we don't have to always like fo- focus on ice cream even though it's an ice cream brand like they give me just like kind of ideas yeah. and then we we work really well together so yeah that's really good They're i just think one it, of my yeah. favorites to work with just because they do give me that like so much creativity yeah yeah i think if the as well like if you put up a post that was branded yeah. and was really heavily influenced by the brand the people would likely scroll past mm-hmm. it maybe not even for yeah. a second realize it was you do you know yeah, just and just like kind of yeah yeah it just looks like an ad like, yeah people don't like ads screaming ads you know what i mean and i think that's why um influencer marketing probably does work better than like tv ads because i even know myself i like skip through them or go out yeah. to get like something from the kitchen yeah. whereas like even if i see ad on one of my favorite bloggers posts i'll read through because i'm like they're similar to me they have similar interests like, yeah, yeah you can kind of relate to it a bit more and obviously everyone needs to make a living at the end of the day I know there's like pros and cons of people doing ads but it's a job you know at the end of the day and everyone there's ads on radio there's yeah. ads on podcasts you know so it's just part of it I suppose and I think once you're staying true to your brand and your audience there's not an issue with it that's the and thing like that's things the that you'd actually use anyway yeah. and I always do that like if someone gets on to me I'll use it a hundred times over and make sure I like it just because you don't want to be the one responsible either you know yeah, so it yeah. falls back on you either way there's no benefit in promoting something just for money it shows through and you end up losing out in the long run so that's the better thing. off being yeah. true <laughs> yeah yeah I always bring them back to the initial story what's the purpose what change do you want to make in the world and I know it's very like it's a bit Disney like what's your vision and how are you going to change the world but actually some people when they deconstruct what they're actually doing they realize actually yeah that's the most fulfilling part of my work and that's how you get a really authentic brand story when the person like people buy from people we all know that that's not a secret but people forget to put a sprinkle of themselves in what they're doing and like especially if you're trying to build a team if you don't know what the vision is there's many people in business today and have employees if you ask their employee what are you actually doing here what's the bigger picture they'd be like well i'm just having you know my wages come in and i do yeah. so like i couldn't care less but when you get a really motivated employee, it's the one that understands the bigger story, but they understand and they're valued in their part of that story, do you know? So like, yeah. how do we start a brand? Like we bring it back to that purpose and people think, oh, let's just fire a logo on it and then we're in business. Like, no. So like, <laughs> don't to even, I get a bit crazy when it comes to logos and branding. It comes down to color. Like I'm not a graphic designer, just to clarify that. I'm <laughs> people miss that first step people jump in and they put colors and they put you know whatever the trendy logos are right now but yeah like, I was gonna say that. um you know Instagram I feel like loads of people are choosing colors and logos that are designed and will look beautiful on Instagram but they haven't thought much more than oh it looks nice on Instagram if they want to get started just in the influencer space mm. so from whether it's on their end yeah. tracking it monetizing mm-hmm. it um how how you would show them the results that yeah. kind of thing what kind of advice would you you have for them to kind of i suppose dip their toe into yeah. the into that side of things initially mm-hmm. i think um affiliate kind of programs are linked to your best way because you're only um giving away let's say a commission when you're benefiting so it's not like a flat fee where even if you get no sales back you're after losing out on whatever they're after yeah. charging so with an affiliate program or affiliate link um you'd only give a commission when you're after kind of Selling gaining yourself or, yeah. yeah so you could give it away of course it depends on like the margin of the business like sometimes things are one percent sometimes you could get a decent amount but i think that's definitely the best way to like dip your foot in or like affiliate codes as well or even if you didn't have budget to do affiliate um codes even just a normal code so you can track like your, the followers would get discount but the blogger themselves doesn't get anything out of it it's a really good way of like tracking who's the most active who's the most engaged and you can kind of follow up on it that way and then obviously as your business grows and you have more budget if influencer marketing is something you want to get into then you can look into like maybe brand ambassadorships or flat fees and stuff because I find as well um the reason I like having like brand ambassadorships and monthly rolling things like smooches it comes it's like really authentic it's something that I love whereas yeah. sometimes it once off posts even if it's something I love and I'll use it organically loads after it can still look a little bit like 
oh, but it was only kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's Whereas not the consistency when, yeah, with when, it. Yeah, when there's consistency there and people know that you're always using it, even when there's not a hashtag ad there, that's what I love yeah. the most. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's the thing, I suppose, when you're working with a brand long term like that, mm-hmm. without even knowing it, you end up talking about the brand because really, you have yeah, to be exactly. using it or whatever. I think it's really yeah. important to nearly um, love them organically first, even yeah. before you talk about even doing affiliate things, just because it's beneficial for everyone. There's no point in putting a plan together and say, yeah, let's work together. And no one's ever heard of them before. The brand has never done influencer marketing before. The blogger has never worked with the brand. The audience never heard of it. It just comes across really kind of like forced, you know, yeah. Yeah. sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's, it's again, like I said, it's very unstable. It's very new. Everyone's still testing it, you know, like yeah. people in digital marketing don't know hundred percent what's working, what's not working as of yet. Bloggers yeah. don't know, you know, it's just about trying and testing. And I yeah. suppose we're so lucky that there is um, a huge way of checking metrics and analytics that it's a little bit easier to yeah, track yeah, it yeah. and trace it and stuff, you know. And notice yeah. on that, that's a great thing for brands to get started with is actually keeping an eye on who is already talking about their Definitely. products because mm-hmm. those people are likely the best people yeah, exactly. to get in touch yeah. with mm-hmm. as well yeah 100 yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And i think that's why press drops and stuff work so well yeah. because you could get like i don't know 20 persons a week let's say and if you post about one and you love it so much they're going to keep an eye on you as opposed to the one that you didn't open on for a week later you know yeah so it's about like creating those relationships early and like being appreciative of everything like of course there's a lot of yeah. perks that come with it along with all let's say there's a lot of slating i'm lucky i don't get that much but um like there's a lot of negative things that come up when yourself out there so you have to yeah. kind of be great for the perks but just like survive the negatives <laughs> as well you know yeah, yeah yeah that can be a hard part of anyone yeah. that's probably the biggest fear of anyone going and putting yeah, themselves out yeah, there as well yeah. you just have a have to have a really tough skin if you are going to put yourself out there but i think after all the tragedies and things that have happened the past few weeks and months and stuff that people are starting to cop yeah. on i know you know sabrina hill from copper she's doing a yes, really yes. great um kind of campaign herself called be accountable so every yeah. week she's sharing or every day she's sharing like three positive accounts and telling people to follow them because obviously with the algorithm on instagram if you're engaging with negative um content or part of those anonymous groups See you're more. actually giving yeah. them more fuel and more hype whereas yeah. if you're completely ignoring them and engaging with positive accounts they're going to outweigh the negative which is i don't know how it took so like so long mm-hmm. to come up with this idea but literally the second that sh- she said it i was like yes this is actually making such a Probably. big difference yeah, yeah. so she's flying yeah. she'd be a great person to get actually in on the podcast as well yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll that yeah. <laughs> no, she's brilliant she's really really great she talks a lot of like wisdom yeah yeah brilliant. you know people are quite often will say Instagram is a negative place, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. It's watch watch your feed. I do something at the moment where I put up five or six feeds every morning. The first things I see when I wake up, the only message I give out on the BeBell platform is positive. Yeah. And funnily enough, the only things I see are positive. Yeah. Who are you subscribing to? Like that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's how the algorithm works, yeah. guys. You see yeah. what you portray. Yeah, but that's in real life as well, the real life algorithm too. I mean like uh, who do you surround yourself with in real yeah. life? If you're surrounding your yourself with people who are just bringing you down, you're you're gonna feel that in your day to day life. Yeah. And it's gonna be the exact same when you Some, open your an app on your phone. Yeah, if someone's really negative yeah. Then you're going to be negative. If someone's really positive, they're going to lift you up, yeah, up as well. Exactly, and that, yeah. and that do, it does, it goes exactly for what you're scrolling through on your feed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, our human psychology hasn't changed. We're just socializing in different ways. Yeah. You know, that's all yeah, it is. Absolutely. 100%. Um, you know, I always say quite often I'll walk down the street and I, with my Be Kind t shirt, yeah. and people's reaction is very, very different on that day. Because people read it. Some people read it and you can see their face in their head. They're thinking, why is she telling me to be kind? Mm. I am kind. What's her problem? Mm. I am kind. And those are the people that ain't smiling, you know what I mean? Um, And then the other people, they read it straight away, look at you and give you the biggest smile. And a smile creates a smile. Simple as. A hundred percent. Yeah. So it's all about message. It's yeah. all about um, mirroring. We all know about mirroring. It's all about, you know, if you smile, someone smiles. If you walk up them with the face like, a, yeah. you know, they look at you with a face <laughs> like a... Um, <laughs> so it's mirroring, you know, you mirror what's around you. Yeah, and completely. there's no problem as well. You know, I always say to people, we oft- I often do talks on decluttering and that includes people. Yeah. And when I always say to people, that's not, you know, if you have that friend and we all have that friend that you go, hi, how's it going? They go... Oh, well, you know, and you go inside, you just go, oh, my God, I can't do this today. I can't do this today. And you go, oh, that's my phone. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a ring. I'll give you a ring because you have to be careful and protect yourself. 
it's not saying don't spend time with that person yeah but it's saying protect yourself at the time that you spend with them yeah um and i would rather plan that in yeah so that i know that my energy might be drained a little bit rather than just get a surprise with it yeah i think people underestimate a lot of the time you, like like the battery in your phone you'll you'll just start dropping quickly if, you, if a lot is needed yeah. of you you know and even like uh, any t- any that'll happen anytime i mean if you have a rough date you're just gonna go home and you're gonna be wrecked Absolutely. and it's gonna be the exact same if you're talking to, to someone who's taking the life out of you <laughs> yeah no it, it's, it's it's difficult but and, and it's not like i say it's not about no you know, because listen we all go through bad times exactly, yeah. and at times I want to be that person there for my friend as you know yeah, as well of course, because yeah. everybody goes through stuff yeah. and everybody needs that friend to listen and I'll always be that friend yeah. but what I'm saying is just protect yourself yeah. so that when you give them time you give them all of your time and listening yeah I think that's the especially on that uh, that if you don't protect yourself in that way you're you won't to you're not going to be able to help them anyway yeah. so yeah that's that absolutely too. yeah yeah oh, we got really deep there yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually a very deep person Mark, I'm having, you know. <laughs> the digital marketing psychology <laughs> <is there. laughs> but it is, it's so true and it's going to come across like if you're surrounded by negativity you're going to be negative yeah. if you're surrounded by positivity you're there's a much better chance you're going to be positive and i think you know and it's not about blasting people every day with you must be happy and choose to be happy like look we we have shit days you're allowed to have a shit day but all i'm saying is like yesterday morning you know i woke up i was it it was not a good day for me but i knew it was going to get better yeah i knew i was going to meet some inspirational people last night yeah so I made the choice to either, am I going to stay in and not go and meet these fantastic people? No, I'm going to make the choice to go to change my mood. Yeah. Because otherwise I'm just in that yeah. hole. And um, so, you know, it is about choices too. Yeah, you can be positive about something crap. <laughs> 100%. You know? yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and very often out of the negative comes something extremely positive as well. Yeah. yeah. Like where, you know, just even working in the business and something bad happens and then you try and flip it yes. around okay how can we turn this into a positive for yeah. us i think that that mindset is extremely important yeah um because if you are you know you no know, running a business shit happens all the fucking Absolutely. time and, and, I, and i never say sorry i can't i always say did you know i can <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah because yeah. if i can't do something for somebody there's actually always something i can do yeah. yeah. So I, I, I never say I can't. I, yeah. You know, and and even as a teacher, Pilates instructor, you know, my my clients will tell you we don't use that word in our class, um, because there's always a way to find a way to a do good it. Outcome. Yeah, always. Yeah, 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 there's yeah. always. And it's the always digital marketer in me is like, and it's always a piece of content. <laughs> 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 that I must work on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like down to the psychology of it nearly. Like so did you ever hear the story of Drunk Tank Pink? No. no. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> You're gonna Google this on your next <laughs> but basically it's like to do with semiotics and the psychology behind colour. So back in the I want to say the 80s, could be the 70s, I don't know, who cares about the details, but it's basically in prisons in the in the States they started using this color called drunk tank pink um, so when they had really aggressive people that they arrested people on a rowdy night out or something and they needed to put them in a cell overnight they put them in these cells that were very calming and very pink um, oh. and the psychology behind it is it took them back to this is all subconscious now clearly they're not in the cell going oh this is lovely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the psychology made them feel like they were in a safe place like in the womb so like the example I use for my business is my logo. Like people are like, oh, you obviously chose pink because it's about women, but it actually was about creating a safe place for them. So like there was a lot of strategic thought went into the colors um, that I chose to build the brand, you know, around. The other one would be navy. And again, because I knew I was going to be teaching in whatever capacity at the time, like businesses will evolve, but what won't change is the values. So I, I always knew that navy is a color that you'd see in branding that would be used with banks or like kind of professional services. 
But for me, I wanted to bring a layer of that academic, like I have studied in the areas, obviously, anyone I bring on board to do training will be, you know, have a very um, solid background of experience and academic, you know, um, time put in, I suppose. But so like things like that, like people may not know, I tell people often, but like those kind of things are subconscious. So like people see a bit of pink, but they see a bit of depth then coming in in the navy and the sprinkle of gold and choosing stars. They're all well thought out to remind people that we're all just on a journey and we're all rising. There's gold in all of us. So like that sprinkle of gold is always going to be, you know, around my brand. So like when I work with clients, then I try to come back to that untangling of what they think they're doing and what they're actually doing. Um, like what feeling do you want it's about feelings, really, all of that whole, the overarching theme of what I do is brand storytelling. And it's always about feelings. And I know Mark would be like, oh, here she goes now with the feelings. And it's all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark, what, what's a clicks colors feeling? <laughs> Impact. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's like when it comes down to it, like there's a lot happening in the psyche or like in the psychology of it all. So like we want people to, you know, I want people to understand what outcome are you are you selling? So on my page, I'm not selling products or services or branding help. I'm selling a feeling. I want people to be motivated. I want people to have the practical skills, right? Mm -hmm. So I try to get clients to think the same way. So like if you're a recent example actually is a gym that I was working with, you know, they're in a completely saturated market space. So we went back to the insight of what that person really what are their values and he's his values were basically actually i want people to be happy and live a better life and just be better so the colors that we rooted all of our work in was yellow because that's the feeling he wants people to be buzzed and to be really energized from any interaction with his brand so like it's very simple and it's actually a space that when i get into into it with people they really enjoy it even people that don't think that they're a marketing folk they get into it and they're like, oh, I get it. Like, I really get it. Like, you know, what I'm actually selling is a convenience or, you know, a transformation or I'm selling, a, you know, it's not always about what I, what the outputs are in terms of the tangible things people are buying. Yeah. So it makes it really easy and enjoyable then. So like when they're creating a logo, I always say to people, your logo is your first employee. It has to do some of the heavy lifting it has to be everything we do in marketing is about getting things top of mind. So like you want to be remembered, you want to be recalled easily. So like your colors, your symbols, all of those elements will help push that process up, you know. So like yeah. look at the Nike logo, for, for instance, if we take the symbol on its own, we all know it means just do it and it's aspirational and it's go for it, you know. Um, so we should all be in a place that if we took the names and the words away from what we're doing people will start to recognize what it's about still you know and that takes time and that's not going to happen overnight but i suppose that's the ultimate goal of branding in my eyes that it's it's a culmination of everything it's not just a slap a logo on it and away we go you know <laughs> and was there a moment on we'd say on that journey you kind of re realized the power of of personal brand or was there like some moment like that like a click moment or is it just over time things built so I actually, um, I was thinking about this question because myself and Jen were talking about it and yeah. um, I realised the power of personal brand at a very, very young age. I would have been about six. Wow. Okay, which I, I know people are going to go, no, she didn't. It wasn't <laughs> called brand when I was six. <laughs> <laughs> but I understood the power of branding because yeah. my dad worked for himself. And um, I recently spoke about this actually on my purse. On somebody interviewed me on on Be Belt podcast, and um, my dad really was the person of the community. Yeah. So he ran a pub, and he sent me and my sister out to run the Sunday school so that the kids would come into the pub after Sunday school because they demand their parents to bring them there, and our family were a brand. Way before the Kardashians, <laughs> let me say. Way before. Um, at that time, it was called reputation. It was called what people yeah. think of yeah. you. Yeah. But now it's called brand. But I, I understood the power of that very, very young because my dad ingrained it into us yeah. of people's, what people's perception meant. 
there's a rule with me is if you teach something, you have to work for yourself. You have to have felt it and been through it <laughs> and knowing the agony and knowing the, the amazingness of when something goes right and how horrible it is jumping around a room by yourself, <laughs> <laughs> celebrating <laughs> by yourself. Do you know what I mean? So, so actually what I worked out then was I'd created a brand and I created this huge network before I knew I needed it. And that is the key. You don't go out searching for a network when you think you want to start a business. You, you network before you do that business because networking actually is making friends and having interest in people and knowing what they do. And that's so important. You know, I, I probably didn't tell anybody that I owned Elite Pilates for two years in network. Really? Well, no, they all just, kind of just knew. literally just going in kind I was, of... I was too interested in what they did. <laughs> That's that, well. That's a fantastic way to be, obviously. Yeah. I you, just, yeah. I used to just yeah. get excited. You know, what what do you do? What do you do? Like, oh my god! You know, everybody's like really interesting. So, and then lots of people just didn't ask me. So I was like, well, I'm I'm not going to sell it to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and people say, do you get a lot of business? Do you get a lot of business from people in network? And I say, do you know? Funny enough, I, there's not loads of people that come to me from network. There's, I certainly have a few girls that come, but the amount of people that come and say, oh, I was out with my friend having coffee the other day and I said, oh, my back is hurting. And she said, oh, you must go to Leach. Sean's fantastic. She's got a great team. Do you know what I mean? It's, yep. it's planting seeds in people's brains to be the first thing on the end of someone's tongue, to be the person that they shout for in a room of opportunity and vice versa. You know, I spent years asking other people what they needed from me and what help I could give them. And actually, when I needed it the most, they all came running. Brilliant. That's fantastic. I think you, one of the things there is that we'll say you may not know exactly how you're going to leverage your personal brand, yeah. but when the opportunity comes along, you have that audience of people who now got your back and are there to support you. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that's amazingly powerful. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of the Digital Marketing Scoop. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please jump into your uh, Apple Podcasts, your Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast platform is, and just make sure to, to follow and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to leave a review, if you enjoyed the episode, I'd absolutely love for you to do that. We put out an episode every single week all with digital marketing tips, case studies, ways to uh, build your business with digital marketing. Um, also, if you are interested in bringing your own business online or looking at um, scaling your business, we'd love to chat with you here at Click. You can visit us online at cliq.ie.